Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm very excited about because I'm hoping it might be a little bit helpful to any reader out there. That's right, today I'm going to be doing a fantasy reading guide where in which I recommend different books and series at different difficulty levels or entry points into the genre. I would say one of my most asked questions ever since I got on social media is what fantasy series should I start with? Where should I go next after I've read this? So hopefully this video might provide some guidelines or some recommendations based on what you're looking for. I have four different categories I'm going to be chatting through today. First is starter, books that I think are really great entry points to the fantasy genre, especially if you've never read any fantasy before. Next is beginner fantasy series. These are great books to check out if you've read a little bit of fantasy and maybe want to dip your toes into something a little bit larger. Next we have moderate fantasy series that I still think are pretty approachable but maybe a little more intense in their world building and character exploration. And then lastly advanced fantasy series. These series are long or perhaps maybe the most intimidating on the list. That being said though, these are just simple, loose, guidelines. Obviously, I think all of these books are incredible and I would recommend them to anyone. And I also feel strongly if any of these books on any of these lists just sound interesting to you, you should definitely just check it out. There are no real rules or guidelines in my opinion, but I do think it can be helpful to kind of have a place to look and start, especially if you're new or intimidated by the fantasy genre, which you should not be at all. But hopefully this video will be a little bit helpful. So disclaimers aside, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Starting off with my starter fantasy recommendations, the first book I am going to recommend is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This is a standalone fantasy novel, meaning you're going to pick it up and the entire story is expressed just within this one singular book. I also feel like I wanted to have a starter Brandon Sanderson recommendation because he's probably one of the most famous fantasy writers out there currently. And I feel like this is a really amazing entry point, especially if you're new to the genre, to get a sense of his writing style and just like how fun his books can be. Tress of the Emerald Sea is often described as if the princess Bride was written from Buttercup's point of view. It's whimsical, fun, and charming, and it very much gives like this fairy tale quest vibe that is super enchanting and will 100% sweep you away. But in this story, we're introduced to our main character, Tress, and Tress lives on an island with her friends and family, and she really has no interest in leaving and exploring the wide world. In her world, there is this vast and large ocean, but the ocean on her planet is not comprised of water, but instead these things called spores. And when these spores interact with water, there's like spontaneous creation making traversing this spore sea very, very dangerous. But at the beginning of this book, while Tress never had any plans to leave her home, she must because she wants to set out to save the one she loves most. And from there, we watch Tress as she ventures out in the wide world, makes friends, defeats enemies, take on adventures and challenges. It's just so fun. It has such a great humor to it. It's like a really charming and nostalgic style of book as well. This also has illustrations throughout it. It was such a delightful read. One of my favorite books I read last year. If you've never read a fantasy novel, I feel like this is one that will definitely charm you and also a great place to start with Brandon Sanderson and a great way to find out that fantasy doesn't need to be intimidating at all. The next book I would recommend is The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a perfect place to check out fantasy because this is more of a Regency romance story with a dash of fantasy. So this is almost entirely rooted into our own real world and reality, but it does have a magical component that adds to the plot and storyline in the best way possible. And I would just say in general, romanticy is a great entry point if you're new to fantasy because it does more so rely on the romantic plot line. So if you're familiar with those types of stories, it's a great way to have something that's familiar with something a little bit new as well. But The Beautiful Ones is by far one of my favorite books I've ever read. This is perfect for fans of like Pride and Prejudice. In this story, we're introduced to our main character, Nina, and Nina is about to debut in society. And she dreams of being a part of this group of socialites called the Beautiful Ones. However, though, Nina kind of stumbles right out of the gate because she has telepathic abilities, which results in her kind of making some clumsy accidents at parties because she doesn't have the best control of her powers until one day she stumbles across a very mysterious and handsome man who also has telepathic abilities and he agrees to begin training her, though he himself has some big secrets because he's actually in love with Nina's like sister-in-law um, which adds a lot of complication very very quickly. This book has a rich and lyrical writing style. It also is full of melodrama. It will pull you in immediately and you will not be able to put it down. It's also so unbelievably romantic. It also has a lot of the really fun propriety that you find in historical romance as well. I had a blast reading this book and I also feel like it's the perfect entry point to fantasy. And the last series I'm going to recommend as a great starter option is the Six of Crows duology by Leigh Bardugo. In general, I think YA fantasy is 
a great entry point to the genre, especially because there's actually some really fun and incredible YA options out there, the Six of Crows duology being one of them. The series in particular has a really fast paced plot, lots of characters to fall in love with, and just in general an introduction to a lot of different fantasy tropes and storylines, so you can really figure out what is your personal preference, I think, with checking out this series. Being YA though, I definitely feel like it's a little bit more approachable and easy to read relative to some of the adult fantasy books out there, but that doesn't mean this isn't a five-star read because it's still a blast to pick up. Personally speaking, Six of Crows houses one of my favorite fantasy tropes, which is a ragtag group of individuals takes on a job that turns out to be much larger than they anticipated and very much out of their scope. The series is set in kind of a Venetian, Amsterdam-inspired trade central fantasy world. It's dark, it's grim, it's all of those things. It's difficult to survive. We're introduced to one of our main characters, Kaz, and Kaz is kind of like a thief lord of sorts. And at the beginning of the first book, his crew is offered an opportunity to steal a powerful artifact to get them a lot of money. So they all agree and they set out on this adventure. Politically speaking, things get rather complicated quickly. And from there, we watch all sorts of things occur. This series has a great balance of wonderful characters you will fall in love with, found family at the core. The mystery of the book is rather propelling, and Leigh Bardugo is a fantastic writer, and she will really immerse you within this vibey historical setting. The Six of Crows duology is honestly full of so many characters you will fall in love with. It also has lots of twists and turns in regards to the plot line, and so many character connections too that you will just be hooked on. It also has a really fun and atmospheric setting, and in general, if you love a heist story, this is for you. Alrighty, moving on, I now have kind of some beginner adult fantasy series to check out. The first recommendation I have is a classic one, and that is the Mistborn trilogy with Brandon Sanderson. I am asked so often where to start with Brandon Sanderson, and I have two recommendations now. First is Tress of the Emerald Sea, if you just want to see if fantasy is for you. But if you're wanting to check out a Brandon Sanderson series, I always say to start with Mistborn. It was where I personally started, so maybe that's why I'm partial to it. I feel like it's such a perfect introduction to adult high fantasy. The characters are fantastic. The plot is bananas, but the writing style is really approachable and so is the world building. This series is set in a fantasy world with the concept of what would happen if the bad guy won. This fantasy world has been ruled by the Dark Lord for like thousands of years and things are bleak and not so great. This series also has a really cool magic system around the consumption of metals. Different metals give you different powers and if you're misborn, you have access to all of the metals. This book is is also a classic setup of a ragtag group of individuals taking on an insurmountable power through the form of a heist, but the trilogy definitely devolves from there and really, really balloons and escalates in some really fascinating of ways. This series blew my mind book over book over book. It's impossible to put down. It's so plot driven and plot forward. I truly was shook to my core. I've now reread this trilogy numerous times and I'm always entertained when I do so. Such a great Brandon Sanderson trilogy, a great place to start if you're newer to fantasy series. I love it so much. Another great starting point would also be the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwen. The first book is Malice. This series I feel like feels intimidating as all the books are pretty long and there are four books within the series itself. That being said though, I feel like the characterization, the writing style, and kind of the trope usage is very approachable, particularly if you're new to the fantasy genre. It's also a great way to sort of dip your toes into a fantasy series with lots of different perspectives and lots of characters to keep track of. But this is a very classic fantasy series setup. It's set in a very medieval-esque fantasy world where there is a prophecy of good versus evil and the war between good versus evil is like on the horizon. The forces of evil have been kind of forming. There's kind of a central figure at the heart of this gaining and trying to win new allies and on the forces of good we're introduced to a very classic chosen one trope. A young man who's kind of from the countryside with the burden of a great fate and prophecy on his shoulders. Again we're reading from so many different perspectives and points of views. Characters all all across the board of this fantasy world, coming together in really unexpected fashions, fates constantly intertwining. This series is very action forward. In particular, if you're looking for a fantasy series that has a lot of battles and scrimmages, John Gwen in particular is a great place and a great author to look to. He has a particular talent of writing like hand-to-hand -hand combat in such a visual way that will very much put you like head first in this story. Because there's so many different plot lines and characters to follow, you'll be pulled in so many different directions in a good way, characters you will love 
love, characters you will hate, you'll be on the edge of your seat. It's very entertaining and again, very, very, very classic in terms of the tropes that John Gwen deploys within this four book series. If you want an epic good versus evil tale, this is a great series to check out. And the last book I'm gonna recommend in the beginner category is The Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee. I love this series so much. And the reason why I'm putting it within the beginner category is that this is actually urban fantasy, meaning a lot of the mechanics of how this world works is inspired by our very own world. So I feel like the world building and the concepts of this book are incredibly approachable, especially if you've never read like a high fantasy story before. So a lot of what you're going to encounter in this you're familiar with. So the fantasy elements that the author perfectly introduces, you can focus on, you won't be too distracted by kind of the background noise of the series. And I just feel like it's really easy to dive head first within this. That being said though, this is another multi POV, very political heavy series that actually centers a crime family. The drama and action within this will have you absolutely flipping the pages. I'm obsessed. But this series is set on the fictional island of Kikan. And here there's a substance called Jade, where in which if a person is wearing Jade, they're able to be like faster and stronger than the average person. On this island, there's also these very powerful crime families that oversee and control all the production of Jade, making them very rich and powerful, obviously. There's also been a cold war between the two most powerful crime families in this area for a long time, but at the beginning of book one, the tensions are beginning to rise and the conflict is beginning to heat up once again. Over the course of this trilogy, you are reading primarily from one of these crime families and you read from people all over the board, um, some of the most powerful people within the organization to the lowest ranking members, the drama, the tension, and the plot twists of this trilogy will keep you absolutely guessing. I loved this so much and I really feel like it's such a great place to start. And I promise if you give it a try, I have a feeling you will love it too. Next up, I have some more moderate leaning fantasy recommendations. The first one I have to recommend is the Davabad trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty, the first one being The City of Brass. I say this is a more moderate option because this is very politic heavy. The complex nature of how the politics form over the course of this trilogy and the time lapse that occur within this trilogy, I do feel like could maybe make it a more challenging read, especially if you're newer to the genre. But I also feel like if you're curious about this, just read it. You're probably going to love it. It's not like that complicated, but I am going to categorize it in the moderate category. Avabad Trilogy introduces us to our main character, Nahari. At the beginning of the story, she's living in 18th century Cairo and she survives by being a thief. At the beginning of the story, she accidentally steals the wrong object and accidentally releases a warrior jinn and he transports her to the magical city of Davabad where in which she finds out she actually has a secret magical heritage and quickly gets wrapped up in the politics of this land. I feel like this trilogy is so interesting because if you just read book one it feels like it's a very straightforward fantasy trilogy with kind of a more romance forward plot line but it really balloons and goes into some very unexpected directions in books two and three and I feel like the world that S.A. Chalk Chakraborty wrote was just so complex, heartbreaking, and beautiful. And the intricacies of the politics of this landscape were stunning to read. And also the complexities of the different relationships and tensions that exist within this magical city of Davabad. Learning about the magical heritage of this place was stunning. And just all of the world building that the author did was impeccable. And I personally ate it all up. S.A. Chakraborty is a historian and you can definitely see that within her writing. I feel like she balances like historical historical references and accuracy within a fantasy landscape so well. I adore this trilogy. Next up, I have the First Lost series by Joe Abercrombie. This is a fun trilogy because it's very, very character forward, but there is a very strong plot through line, especially starting with book two. I put this book more in the moderate category, unless you love horror, because this is a very dark, dark, dark and disturbing fantasy read. This is technically grimdark. So the characters you're reading from and that you're following are not morally so great. In fact, you might be questioning yourself the entire time why you like these characters so much because they're quite horrifying and terrifying and annoying and just overall kind of bad people on many different fronts. But that's also what makes this series so fun to read because it's very unpredictable because you don't know what the moral compasses of your characters are going to drive them to do, if you know what I mean. But the First Law trilogy introduces us to a large cast of characters from kind of different places in this fantasy world. First is Logan and he is a warrior from the north and at the beginning of book one, he kind of finds himself separated from 
his hired group of sores and he kind of just decides to travel south due to a prophecy and he gets wrapped up in a lot of the violence and the politics there. We follow Glockta, who was once a decorated war hero, but after being captured by enemy forces, he was tortured. And now he struggles with a lot of disability and he tortures people for a living. And he's also my favorite character. We follow a really obnoxious and annoying young man who really has no skill or ambition, but kind of is being propped up to be a part of this sword fighting competition. And all of these characters seem like they should have nothing to do with one another, but slowly their fates and lives become intertwined in unlikely fashions. There's also other characters that are introduced and things really balloon and go into some unexpected places. It's funny and gruesome and grim. This series I put more in the moderate category because there are a lot of books within Joe Abercrombie's world. There's this first trilogy, there's a set of standalones, and then an additional trilogy to read as well, all set in the same universe. I think the writing style is super approachable, but it is a bit darker, maybe a little bit bloodier than other genres will showcase. But I will say if your primary genre of choice is horror, maybe start with this one. The last series I'm going to recommend in the moderate category is the Poppy War series by R.F. Kuang. This is another grim, dark fantasy series that really delves into the trauma and horrors of war, following characters that are making impossible and terrible decisions on a regular basis, both for their own survival, but also in their pursuit of revenge. This series also is inspired by real life history, drawing on real life events to tell an unrelenting story of pain and destruction. But in this story, we're introduced to our main character Rin and Rin at the beginning of book one is very poor and from a poor southern province within her empire that she lives in but she is determined to get out of here and escape her pre-arranged marriage so she dedicates a lot of her time studying for the exams that allow for placement in other places across the empire. She scores very very high and she actually gets admitted to the most prestigious military academy across the entire empire. From there Rin feels like all of her problems are going to be solved but when she she arrives, she quickly realizes that is not the case. Poorer than all of her other classmates, also a woman in dark skin, she's quickly othered from everyone else. She also begins to study in the ways of shamanism, realizing she actually has an immense power. However, though, the entire trajectory and structure of the story really transforms about midway through book one, because war arrives on the shores of the Empire of Rin's world, basically transforming this from like a classic school story to one of utter destruction and pain. And the contrasts of those two things are really explored. And I also think really well done and captured. I love the Poppy War trilogy so much, but I cannot deny it's a very disturbing and hard read at times. It's very dark and the characters that we're following are also not necessarily trying to do the most just and right thing. They're trying to survive. And Rin herself becomes very much obsessed with the concept of revenge. One of the best things I've ever read, but also a difficult read too. Alrighty, we have done it. We've made it into the advanced category for recommendations. And the first series, maybe world, I'm going to recommend is the Robin Hobb universe. Here's the thing with Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb's writing is not necessarily very difficult to read by any means, but it's also a huge commitment. All of these books are a part of the Robin Hub universe. They're all interconnected. They're all part of the same world. And I can understand looking into fantasy, maybe checking out a 13 book series might not necessarily be the place you want to start with. That being said, though, it might be one of the greatest things you ever read. I love Robin Hobb with my entire heart. I also recognize that her plots are more methodical, slow moving. She's all about pacing and payoffs. So her books aren't necessarily going to center the most bananas plot twists or action sequences. But at the same time, I personally have never been able to put her books down because I'm so captivated by her characters and how things come together. And just the slow burn and slow build of everything just makes them some of the most satisfying books I have ever read. But I also know that this can be viewed as a little intimidating and maybe a little more advanced. So that's why I put it in this category. But the Robin Hobb universe is structured in a a variety of different series. First and foremost, we have the Fitz centered series. She has multiple series following our main character Fitz. And we basically over the course of all of these books, watch Fitz grow up at the beginning of book one. He is a young bastard child arriving at the Farseer kingdom where in which he's then trained to be a spy and an assassin. We watch him get wrapped up in courtly politics and get involved in a conspiracy. But really Fitz is one of the most interesting and dynamic 
fantasy characters you will ever follow. He's truly a character study of the trauma of being the chosen one in a fantasy landscape. We see him constantly have to oscillate between duty and wanting to do something for himself. Fitz feels very deeply. He's very focused on his emotions and therefore we are constantly reading him mulling over his emotions and I personally love Fitz more than any other fictional character I've ever read. We also alongside Fitz are introduced to a character named The Fool, one of the most interesting relationships of all time explored book over book over book over book. But again, the Fitz storylines are just one half of this world. We also get to read multi-POV stories growing and building this world that Robin Hobb has created. From ship-faring individuals trying to find their own fortune, to pirates, to dragons, there are so many things to experience within the Robin Hobb universe, and I've loved every single second of it. I'm currently on the last book of the last trilogy myself, and I could not recommend it more. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite things I have ever read. It's been so satisfying and just how everything has come together. There's just nothing like it. And I feel like once I finish, I'm just going to start back over with the very first trilogy, which is the Farseer trilogy with the Assassin's Apprentice. It's a quiet contemplation and a hyper focus on characters. She will destroy you. I sob reading this. I'm telling you, Robin Hobb is a genius, but I also agree is not necessarily the most approachable. The next series I would put more in the advanced category would be the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I would add a caveat to this, and that would be if your primary genre of choice is literary fiction or speculative fiction, just start with the Broken Earth Trilogy. But if you haven't read a lot of fantasy, the writing style of this trilogy might not be the most approachable. This is one of the most unique fantasy trilogies I simply have ever read structurally from a writing style point of view, characters concepts that N.K. Jemisin is exploring throughout this are just groundbreaking, truthfully, for the fantasy genre itself. And that's why, one, it, everyone should read this book at some point in their life, but I also can realize that this might be a little intimidating or maybe a little bit of an unusual place to start if you're not used to the genre itself. But the Broken Earth trilogy is set in a world that is constantly ending due to various like climate catastrophes, earthquakes, tsunamis, the world ends over and over again. Therefore, human civilization has evolved in such a way where communities are really small, they have very specific rules, things are written down and passed on, so surviving members of the human race can kind of carry on and persist. There's also individuals in this world who have the ability to harness the Earth's power, but instead of being viewed as possible saviors, they are very much controlled by the government and viewed with a lot of fear. In book one, we're introduced to three perspectives, a young girl who's first discovering her power, a young woman who's working for the government as a magic wielder, and then lastly, a woman who is on a journey to try to find her lost daughter. This series is complicated and even kind of just like giving that brief synopsis only scratches the surface of what you'll experience while reading this book. There's so many different places that this series will take you. Also the topics that N.K. Jemisin explores from identity to race to sexuality to the concepts of motherhood are all interwoven into this and it's just perfection. One of my all-time favorite fantasy series of all time and you should definitely read it. Don't be too intimidated by it but no especially with the first book. The reading experience is definitely unique because it's told from second point of view. And the last series I'm going to recommend within the advanced category is the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. Look, I get it. These books are really long. Um, currently there are four books out. The fifth book is coming out later this year and all of them are over 1,000 pages. This is by far one of the most popular fantasy series currently being released and it's epic, epic high fantasy. Given its notoriety and given its length, I know a lot of people are interested in it and also intimidated by it. I do put it in the advanced category given the time commitment. But I also just want to say I wouldn't be too intimidated by this series to not pick it up. I would recommend reading other Brandon Sanderson series first before reading this, but the writing style, the plotting, and the world building is not so unbelievably confusing. And in my opinion, it's also not very slow either, but it is also true that Brandon and Sanderson takes his time building and introducing concepts and plots to us, meaning it might read a bit slower if you're not used to, you know, this type of world building and pacing in something that is so long and epic, such as this series. But this is a series set in a fantasy world where One Kingdom, where most of our characters that we read from are from, is like very aggro. They're very war focused. They're very into, you know, like fighting their enemies, taking over land. And they have been at war with another group of people for many generations. And the seat of their kingdom has kind of actually moved to this war front, but the war is transformed from one of like dominance and taking over this land and protecting their kingdom and also getting revenge 
to kind of a war-based economy. They're scrimmages to get like powerful artifacts that they can then sell. It's kind of turned into a very corrupt situation. In this series, we're also following a variety of characters, all moving with their own motivation. I'll talk about a few of them now, but understand there are way more characters that I'm about to talk about. Each book kind of centers a character too. First, we have Dalinar, who's kind of a general of one of the sub armies on this war front, powerful and very military minded, but he also begins to have visions and he thinks he's losing his mind. We follow a character named Kaladin, who was once a doctor, but is now a slave forced to work on the war front and risk his life every day. We follow Shallan, very bright young woman who's training underneath a very powerful scholar, but she has plans to actually rob her patron to help her family back home. And then we follow an assassin in white who has very mysterious powers roaming the land. But again, there's way more characters than what I've actually just talked about. It's really good. The character dynamics, the action, the plot twists, all of the different things that Brandon Sanderson focuses on in this series, you will fall in love. I think book two is maybe my favorite, but I've enjoyed every book I've read so far. I've reread this series so many times because I'll be honest, I forget stuff on a regular basis. I can't wait for book five to come out later this year. And yeah, I would put this in the advanced category, mostly because you should read other books in the Cosmere before you read this. But at the end of the day, if none of the other Cosmere books appeal to you and this really is jumping out to you, whatever, give it a chance, give it a read. You're gonna love it. But if you can't, if you have the patience, check out other Cosmere books first. Alrighty guys, that is my fantasy reading guide. Hopefully this was helpful in some form or fashion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.